Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today we are going to be using lots of products, um, the birthday wishes, the, I think it's called Best Parents Stamps and Dyes, the Damask Cover Plate, and then the Pansies and the Wildflowers from the Lovely Layers. I just wanted to point out here, I have the guide. If you have any of these Lovely Layers dyes from Honeybee, they have the guide on their website. Um, if you look in the bottom right-hand side, there's a link that will open a PDF that you can print. So here I've picked out a bunch of different colors of cardstock that I'm going to be die cutting out of, and then I will also have these all linked below. This is a combination of Hero Arts and Concord and ninth cardstocks. So what I like to do when I'm doing a lot of die cutting is I like to lay out my cardstock. As you can see, I have my guide laying over here so I can see what I need to cut out of each color of cardstock um, so that everything is going to make sense. I know that this is a long video. This is a long video even for me, but I promise you if you stick around, it will be worth it. So we're going to be doing lots of coloring and lots of kind of making this our own. Um, but And then there's a bonus card at the end, which I didn't even intend on making. I intended to make the shaped card. Um, but I know that it's a little bit longer. It just has a lot of content. Um, so anywho, I go through and I do each flower by itself. So I went through, I laid out everything for my pansies and then I die cut them. I put them all into a cup and then I move on to the next flower. Um, because I used a combination of, there's several of these lovely layers that Honeybee has done and they're all just as good as the other ones. Um, so it just depends on what kind of flowers you're into. I trim down all of my cardstock to a smaller size so that I can run all of my dies through my Biddy Buzz Cutter. This is just easier for me. I can have my cup right here and put them in as I'm done die cutting them. I can just pop them out. Sometimes I have to use my tweezers, you know, to for the assist uh, to get them out, but then I have my cup right there and I can just throw them in there. And then once all the die cutting is done for one flower, I move that cup over and then I lay everything out and do the next flower. This keeps me from mixing up what goes with what, because sometimes these dies have a lot of little pieces. It also helps me to make sure that I have everything when I go to build them, that I'm not hunting down you know, where they go because I haven't lost pieces. I do have a tendency to cut out some extras while I'm doing the die cutting portion, just in case, especially with the smaller pieces. So whichever... You can die cut these all out of white and then do all of coloring. I have definitely done that before, and I did that with the bells for Christmas, which I have a totally different card coming up with that soon. Um, but the using the colored cardstock for me, even when I do, like when I cut them out of white, like I typically add a little bit of ink blending, and it's because the colors help me to see which layers go where. And I know that's not the same for everybody, but that does work for me. Um, when I looked at the um, variations, I guess is the word I want, like the different, what are they called? Are they variations of flowers? like the types of flowers, but they're in the same type. I guess it is a variation. I don't know. Huh. Anyway, um, both the, like the wild flowers that I found and the pansies both kind of had like yellow green. Um, so I picked a lighter and a darker because I knew putting my bouquets together, I would definitely want some variation with my green. So it wasn't just like boring and it was like yellow green on top of yellow green. Um, and then because I wasn't really sure of the colors I was going to use, I did cut out three of these flowers and I cut out a yellow, a blue, and a pink. Um, I told you I like to cut out extras because I don't enjoy the die cutting portion. So when I'm done with it, I just want to be done with it. <laughs> I just want to be done with it. Um, so now everything is die cut. These are the little blue bells, but you could also certainly use them as Lily the Valley. Uh, so I cut out white and blue, not knowing really which ones I was going to use. But these ones are super simple. So you can assemble these before you add your shading with your markers. If you are doing the shading where you're doing ink blending, you probably would not want to assemble them. And actually Dawn uh, has a wonderful video on that. If you haven't seen it, I think it's over on the W plus nine channel. Um, 
where she shaded these with like the uh, little blending brushes and got such great detail and shading. It was amazing, but we're going to be using markers today because I'm a colorist and that's what I'm most comfortable with. So these ones, very easy, just like a two layers glue them together they look super cute but we're going to add some dimension with the coloring now i will be using alcohol markers um a combination of them so you can use whatever markers you have in your stash today i'm going to be using copics and sketch markers um to add the shading that I want. And for white, we're going to be using grays. Now, when we're doing this coloring, it's definitely going to look like I just colored this flower gray, but it's because there's no other colors behind it. When you use the Lovely Layers dyes, they have um, detail kind of etched into them, which is great for adding the shading because you know exactly where it should go. You just have to follow the lines. So because this is a white flower and I didn't want to go overboard and I wanted to make sure I conserved most of my white area, I did start with my darkest color and then work out to my lightest. And that was sufficient to add the amount of depth that I was going for. Again, it is going to look gray because it's not comparative to anything else. Ultimately, when you see it in the finished card, they will look white. So just hang tight for that. Uh, so you may be asking, Kelly, they've had these lovely layer dyes for a very long time. Why have you never used them before? I'm not a big fan of die cutting. I, I don't try to hide that. Like everybody has their different things that they're into and that's totally okay. I can't remember the last time I saw Jennifer McGuire pick up a marker um, because she loves the dies and that's totally cool. There is something for everybody in paper crafting. Let's go back to the stems here. So I've picked my yellow greens out. Underneath the flower will have shading and then the stem that's underneath the, what do they call it? The calyx where the bud meets the stem, um, there will also, that, that part will be lighter and then the stem coming out from underneath it will be darker. The leaves that come across, like out from behind it, will also have a little bit of shading. Um, you can change the how you shade that based on whether or not you want them to look like they're behind the stem or in front of it, but I just went ahead and committed to adding the shading. This largest one here with the little leaves, like where the bud is connected, um, was a little bit bigger, and so I was able to add a little bit more shading kind of um, flicking out from there. And then from here, I'm just going to work out to my lightest color. Um, in the same, like I'm going over the same areas again each time. I'm just overlapping the color just slightly so that it is a little bit of a larger colored area. Um, but going over each prior color will help them blend better because alcohol markers blend in the fibers of your paper. So that is what I am doing here. And I colored, I'm going to show you the blue ones, um, just one little flower so you can see the blue combination that I used. Um, but I colored them the same way. I just didn't film the stems because I did exactly the same thing. So with the lightest color, I am going to add a little bit of shading to the stem as well, especially the parts where... Um, the darkest points are like where those meet just so everything blends really nicely and then this flower is done and I'm going to move on to the blue one. So I've already assembled it. I've already done all the green shading. I'm just going to show you one flower again so that you can see shading them the same way but with different colors is like it works exactly the same. So we colored it white by just adding the shadows. Here we're doing the same thing. We are still leaving some of the original cardstock color, but we're just adding shading to it. So now what if you want to add shading to die cuts where it's not just one or two layers? I'm going to show you the trick that I use to make this happen. I lay them out together and then I go in with just a slightly darker marker and I trace it. So I can see when I remove the die cut on top where my shading should be. And then I just go through and I do that for each individual layer. Now I am going to go to a little bit of a lighter colored marker with this next layer because my 
uh, cardstock is lighter. So I don't need quite as dark of a color. So I am going to go in just a little bit lighter and trace that die cut. But you just want to make sure that everything is lining up when you're going in and doing your tracing because otherwise you're going to trace it in the wrong spot and then your shading won't be in the correct area. But now when I pull these apart, you can see these little lines that are going to show me where to shade it. And then I will do the same thing for the bud for the pansy. It has three layers, and so in order to make sure that I get the shading right where I want it to be, I need to go in and trace those. Now, when I did it the first time, I did them both with the lightest color, but I realized very quickly as it dried that I wasn't going to be able to see it on the dark cardstock, so I needed to go in again with the darker colored marker, and then I realized that when I was doing the tracing for this one, I did it with the stem, but I actually needed to do it with the other um, piece of the flower. So that's why you see me doing there. And now we're going to go in and add in all of the shading that's really going to make this pansy pop and come to life. I apologize. You guys know how it is on the weekends. For some reason, my nose is always just running, so I'm doing the best I can. When I lay down the darkest color to add my shading... I trace the inside edge of the line that I put down to make sure that it's going to be behind the die cut and that the shading goes all the way to the edge. And then I'm going to check it. I will check every single layer. And I know that it seems like, Kelly, that's so monotonous and it's time consuming. It really only takes a second and it's totally worth it because you don't want to get to the point where you're... Um, putting your flower together where you're adhering everything and then you realize that your shadow doesn't go out as far as you need it to and it doesn't look right. So again, because I am conserving the cardstock paper as a portion of the color of my flower, I'm just adding the shadows and the uh, lines that you see on the edges that I'm adding, I am following the lines that are already there with the dye um, to give it its shape. And then here, I'm going to double check it again. Everything's looking good there. We can start to see really how this is going to, you know, kind of come to life. And now here, watch when I check it here. I can see in that middle right-hand section that the shading doesn't go down far enough. It is, you can see the blank purple cardstock right there. So now that I know that because I checked it, I can go in with my darkest marker and I can just hit that one small area without having to reshade everything before it's all adhered and put together and I'm risking coloring in other layers. I'm going to switch now to my yellows. The reason that I chose a very light purple is because I knew that I could go in with my yellow alcohol markers and I could still put down pigment that was going to give me the genuine look of a pansy, which has a yellow center and typically a purple or a blue violet. Sometimes they're pink, um, but I think most traditionally pansies are seen in purple. Um, but I knew that the cardstock was light enough that I'd be able to put the yellows in there and then do the shading with my purple, and it wasn't going to look weird or funny. You have to remember that yellow is purple's complement, and so choosing a more pinkish purple is going to be a benefit to me because it's not going to get muddy. It's going to pick up more on that pink in the purple versus the blue in the purple because, you know, yellow and blue make green. So just make sure if you're doing something like this, uh, that when you're picking your base color of your cardstock, that it's going to match well with that yellow. I think I would really like to do these in some pinks or magentas um, or maybe some blue violets and I would have to play around a little bit with the base of the cardstock but I do think you can make that work because um, I don't think everybody always wants to make purple pansies. You know what I mean? You want to get the most out of the money that you've spent on your die cut by getting different looks. So now here again I'm lining everything up making sure that everything looks the way that it should and it does and then I'm going to put this little piece here, make sure I'm happy with the shading there. And then this last little piece, I colored exactly the same way. Um, 
I knew that I needed to do the veins. And this is one of those things that's just like, sometimes you're a little scared to do it. And that's okay, because I am too. So I knew I wanted to do the veins. So originally I went in with this VO5 to do the veins. And I realized very quickly that it was not dark enough. And I was going to have to get over my fear and get my courage up to go in with the darkest violet, because that is what they look like in nature. And so I just followed right along the etching, you know, like the embossing that is with the dye and I had no issues. It didn't run or bleed or whatever. I was very light-handed and I used just the tip of the marker and it worked out and I think it does genuinely look like the veins that you see in a pansy, which really is the whole point. So I skipped this littlest portion. This is just me filling in the veins because I colored it the exact same way and it is a longer video so I'm trying to consolidate where I can. <laughs> um, for this inside portion that is like the center of the pansy, I just added um, the lightest color and the mid-tone. And then for the yellow portion, I am going to do a little bit of shading um, of the bottom. Like, well, no, I guess it's the top when you flip it around. It's like the top down because that little purple kind of arch piece is going to sit on top of it so it would be darker. Uh, and this is the same color combination that I will use for the yellow wildflower when we get there. Moving on to the greenery. So here with this stem, again, there is some embossing to kind of show you where it needs to go. I am following along with those lines. And then I'm also adding shading so that this leaf up top looks kind of like it's folded back. And I can create that look by putting darkness underneath it. And it will look like that piece because it's brighter is kind of folding back and casting a shadow onto the bottom of the stem. I really hope that makes sense. I try to explain things in a way that are easy to understand, but sometimes it is, it just is difficult. So hopefully by watching it and listening, like the two, you, you can hear them come together. For the leaves, I really wanted to create lots of texture. And again, I followed along with the dye. So it has lines that are embossed into the center. I did add the little bit of shading, the little triangles on the outside. And I just added them in between each one of the cut serrated sections. And this is going to give me so much dimension on these leaves. Um totally worth it to take the time to do the shading on the inside and the outside. And we're not even filling in a, a huge portion of it. We're basically just kind of extending the shading with every color that we go over it, going from our darkest out to our lightest, and then still conserving just the smallest amount of that cardstock color. You certainly could stop here, but I like my colors to be a little bit more blended. And so I did go in with the YG03 just to make sure that everything Thing, you know, blended really nicely. And then I will show you this compared to the other one, which is just the die cut cardstock. And there's such a tremendous difference. Totally worth the time that it takes to put them in. Now we're going to start building. I didn't put any dimensional adhesive in between these, though you certainly can if you're interested. But because I had so much going on um, in my card, I just adhered all of them down flat. And ultimately, I was super happy with the way that this came out. Um, I think the pansy is super pretty and it's kind of the star of my show. So we started talking about earlier... Um, why did I decide to use the lovely layers? Well, I think that they're great products I always have, but I don't love die cutting. And like I said before, there's something for everybody and I'm just more of a stamper colorer. That's what I enjoy. Um, but every once in a while, you want to make something that you think is really going to be exceptional. And the reason that I wanted to make something that was, I really wanted to be exceptional is because it's for my mother and there is nobody in the world that I want to do more for besides my kids than my mom uh, because she does so much for me. 
all of the time. And there, I, I don't think there's anybody who deserves it more. Like she is so selfless. Um, but so I really wanted her to have a card that she knew I spent time on and I was thinking of her. Um, and to me, the lovely layers are beautiful dyes and they produce beautiful cards. And I knew the coloring would really kind of take it up a notch and that I would be able to create something for her that is not just your regular everyday card that... I would create for anybody else. Not that I don't think my other cards aren't pretty or beautiful or, or have worth, but I wanted her to have something that was special that she would be able to see because my mother watches all of my videos um, because she's endlessly supportive of all of the things. Um, but I, I know that she knows what my regular, like my everyday kind of style of card is. And I know that she will recognize that this is not it and that it definitely took me more time, but it was totally worth it because it's for her. So I actually sent this, I sent, I took a picture and sent it to my friend Lisa. And I was like, dude, I finally used the dyes. And she was like, finally, like, she, and again, I have wonderful friends and she's super supportive. She's like, it looks amazing. What, you know, why did you wait so long to use them? And I was like, basically like it's my mom's birthday. And so I was willing to wade through all of the die cutting that I would have to do in order to make her something special. And so that's how we got to this card that we're, <laughs> that we're creating now is because I wanted my mom to have something that was special because my mom is special. So, um, well, we have talked in the, in the past about my mom and my relationship with my mom. And so it's no state secret that I am a huge, uh, fan of my mother. She is, she never, she never fails to impress me with her capacity to be so completely selfless. I'm getting a little, <laughs> sorry. Um, because nothing shows you how more, nothing shows you more how selfish you are than having your own children. Um, and it's just something that is because now you have this little human being that relies on you for everything and you never have any time for yourself and nothing shows you your level of selfishness more than having kids. And I am totally guilty of that. I am super selfish with my time uh, and how I spend my time. I I know that. I am very self-aware. And so my time is like my my most precious commodity that I could give somebody. And my mom is, she's always over here, like helping with the kids, dropping stuff off. Oh, I know you've been having a hard time finding your coffee creamer. I picked you up too with the, um, you know, grocery store when I was there. Oh, I know you guys really like, you know, these chocolates. So I spent my afternoon making you these chocolates from scratch. <laughs> like she is just so completely, like she's so thoughtful of other people and just such a wonderful example like, I really did win the mom lottery, and I am very grateful for that. I I know that there are other people in the world that have different relationships with their moms, or maybe they didn't get to have a relationship with their mom due to, you know, different circumstances. But I was given the very best, the very best and I am so grateful for her every single day. Um, so I hope that she knows that I was thinking of her and how much I just love and adore her when I was making her this card. Okay, let's let's get it together, folks. Let's get <laughs> let's get it together. Um, so anywho, I just wanted to show you. I am going to make a shaped card, but I did want to show you a couple of different ways that you could kind of use these on regular cards and the layouts that you could use. Um, whether you were using the pansies and the wildflowers or just the wildflowers, um, there's a multitude of combinations that you could use these dyes, which is what makes them such a good investment. Um, because you can use them over and over again, different colored cardstocks, different techniques, all of that jazz, um, and endless amounts of layout. And here, like they have so many lovely layers, dyes, honeybee offers so many, um, 
and greenery in addition to that. I think that these little Lily of the Valleys would be perfect for Easter, for a sympathy card, um, just something super simple like this, like one little Lily of the Valley and, you know, maybe like a little leaf and a sentiment and you're, you're good to go. So there's just endless combinations. I ultimately, this is the one that I ended up going with, which was the purple pansy with the little bud, um, the bluebells, and then the yellow wildflower. And the reason that that worked for me was I felt like the yellow was a nice complement to the yellow inside the pansy. And then blue, stop it. I love blue. My mother loves blue. Blue was making it on this card. It didn't have a choice. Um, so this is the combination that I ended up up going with and I struggled kind of a little bit to like okay what is like what kind of vessel am I going to put this in so that this makes sense and then I remembered that I had the mason jar um, which I have not used this is the first time I've ever used it but we have a, a mason jar shaped card and so I cut this out of Nina 80 pound solar white cardstock and it already puts in the little embossing line. So this is the whole card. This is basically the, roughly the size of an A2 size card, but it's in the shape of a mycin jar, which was perfect for me putting my flowers into a vessel. Um, so I cut that out. I used my bone folder. And then, of course, I can't leave it uncolored because you guys know how I am. And it has to have all the detail, especially because it's for my mama. Um so I'm going in with those same gray markers and I'm just giving it um, a little bit of shading so it doesn't look so flat. Like we have all these beautifully colored uh, florals that if we just kind of put it on a flat jar, that jar would stick out like a sore thumb. Like it would stick out quite a bit. Um, so I am adding the shading. This is the same way like with the lid. This is the same way I would shade it if I was doing a lid on top of this versus just having it as an open jar. Um, and again, this is just to give it a little bit of shape. It doesn't have to be anything super fancy. I just put down a couple of lines in the general um, shape of the jar that was already there and then blended that out with the lightest color. And then because I prefer a blue uh, you can make your jar any color you want. You could even leave it this white. Like, you literally could make it any color, any tint. They sell them all kinds. Um, but I'm going to do mine with a very, very light blue. Um, and I'm just going to go over the same lines that I already have down. And all this is going to do is just kind of tint that gray um, to be just a little bit more on the bluer side because I thought that it was prettier uh, than just the, the gray. Um, but you certainly could leave it just like this and, and that would be totally fine. But here's the blues I'm using. I apologize that I did not zoom back in for this portion, but because it's like the full A2 size card, I felt like you could see it well enough without me zooming back in. And honestly, I was worried that if I zoomed in, um, I would be sometimes coloring off the like off the frame and you wouldn't be able to see it so anywho that's with the blues on there and then just kind of like I said went right over the grays to give it that little bit of a blue tint um which I thought was super pretty and I liked it much better that way and then we're going to work on the sentiment so for the sentiment I chose the label that comes with the mason jar and then I chose the mom shadow and the mom word from the best parents. And now I'm cut one, the word out of white. I'm adhering that down on black. So it's going to sit right on top of my label. Um, for the label, I wanted to add a little bit something extra, like almost like a chalkboard label to kind of finish it off. So I fit it back into its die and then I held it with one hand and then I traced along the inside edge with a size 10 uh, white gel pen from Jelly Roll and that created a really, really nice white outline. So once I did the top, I switched the way that I was holding it so that I could do the bottom. If it ever starts moving on you or you can feel like, you know, maybe you're not getting a bit good line, um, then just stop doing what you're doing. Reset the die and start again. It's no big deal. Um, so now I, I taped my jar down. I have my flowers in place. Yes, my flowers are going to overhang my card. This will not prevent it from opening at all. 
So don't, don't worry about that. My card opened and closed just fine. I'm going to trim off these little extra stem portions um, after I picked it up with my press and seal, and then I'm just going to glue it down. Now I'm going to be honest with you. I'm used to putting glue all over everything, <laughs> all over everything. And so it took me um, a little bit of like having to stop and think about it to remember to only put glue on the bottom portion so that the top portion of my um, cardstock was not sticky. Uh, uh, I failed with the, you'll see here in a second with this leaf. I just coated this whole thing and then I was like, oh, wait, 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 I gotta wipe this off because <laughs> it doesn't, that should not be there. Um, so I didn't, I will say that I did notice that the flowers that didn't have any leaves to support it um, were a little bit floppy, not floppy enough that they didn't stand up. They did, um, but floppy enough that I would be a little bit worried that if you were giving it to, you know, someone who was going to be like aggressively opening and closing it, they might tear. Um, so in that case, I would recommend putting kind of a secondary piece of cardstock behind it, almost like stacking it just to make it a little bit more sturdy. Or alternatively, you could put another leaf behind your flower, which would also help just give it a little bit more weight so that it would be sturdier. So here, this little bud fell off for some reason or another. I honestly don't know. So I just decided that I was going to go in and glue it. And then I will go through, just like I have been with the hinge method, gluing everything else. Um, I didn't think you needed to see the whole thing. I, I've shown you this before. Um, and so now that is the floral section here. I'll untape it and I will show you that it does not prohibit this from opening in, in any way. That's the glue I put on the back of the leaf. So here, this didn't bother me any, but if it does you, again, you can cut a secondary piece. Same thing with the mason jar. If the coloring on the inside bothers you, you can cut a secondary piece and glue it in there to cover up the coloring but it didn't bother me any. Uh, so here I'm going to put my label in place and then I have my mom that's die cut. And then in addition to that, I did a heat embossed happy birthday that I will also be adhering. Yes, I could have stamped it right down on my label and heat embossed it there, but honestly, I was too afraid to mess it up. And so I decided to just do it on a label. The black's going to blend into the black. It's not really going to be super noticeable when you look at the card, and I was okay with that. So now my little jar says, happy birthday, mom. Um, and I was able to write her a little note on the inside of that, and it I was happy with the way it looked. The only other thing I did was add a little bit of shimmer to it. Uh, I didn't even add any white gel pen. Aren't you guys proud of me? I didn't think it needed it. It had so much detail already. I really didn't think it needed the white gel pen at all. But I do like the shimmer and the glitters. I think that makes everything prettier. You may notice in here I have a set of the blue bells. This is our bonus card, by the way, because I had so many leftovers. I figured I'm, I might as well do what I was originally intending to do and use this uh, damask cover plate. Um, but the blue bells, I cut them backwards because I needed them to go the other way. So even though they don't have the same embossed lines, I don't think that it is noticeable because we add the shading on top of it. And so that is how I got those. This one, the only leaf I had left was the bright yellow green, and I needed a darker yellow green to kind of offset the balance of my bouquet. So I just went in with the darker green and colored right over it. I adhered everything down with the hinge method, the same thing I did before. And then I stamped and heat embossed this birthday wishes. And because I died I cut a bunch of extra pieces, which honestly I give my friend Dawn a lot of trouble for. <laughs> um, but because I did it, I was able to get a bonus card. So here is your shaped card. Here is your bonus card. I hope that you learned a little bit of something. Thank you guys so much for spending your time with me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.